Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Pat's Mythos. My name is Pat. I have a special video here for you today as a celebration for reaching 100 subscribers here on the channel. Before I talk about what the video is going to be, I just want to say thank you very much to anyone who has subscribed or taken the time to watch any of my videos, comment, like, whatever. I really appreciate anybody who um, has done that and it has been a great outlet for my wonderful hobby of reading so far to have this channel and get to interact with everybody. So thank you again and without further ado, today's video will be a bookshelf tour. As you can see, my bookshelf behind me is in all of my videos, but there's a lot of interesting things on here that you may not notice at first when I'm sitting here speaking normally uh, in a video. And I'm really excited to show you all that today. Uh, all of us probably have some type of bookshelf if you're a lover of reading. However, for me, my bookshelf is sort of a nexus for all my hobbies. I have other things other than books that I love to show you that might give you a little bit of insight into who I am as a reader, as well as just a person and some of my other interests and hobbies that I have. In addition to this bookshelf, I also have a smaller bookshelf downstairs that is sort of a more conventional uh, decor in our house and our living room. I'd like to start by showing you that bookshelf downstairs so you can see some of those books, and then I'll return up here to show you everything I have going on on my main bookshelf here. Let's go take a look at what we've got. All right, so here we are at the bookshelf downstairs. Um, as you'll see on the upstairs bookshelf as well, I'm a huge fan of houseplants, so got a few plants here. Um, really like this one because of its cool striped white leaves. Uh, this is called a Birkin plant. And as we make our way down here through the bookshelf, uh, here is a shrine to our wonderful dog, or at least it kind of looks like a shrine. Uh, that's a picture of Louis. Why he needs a framed photo of himself in the house that he runs, I don't know, but we have it. Um, <laughs> coming down here, uh, again, this is a more of a decorative bookshelf, but still, I love all these books. Um, here are some reference books that I really love. I'm a huge geography fan, so having I got these uh, National Geographic books uh, from my grandparents growing up, and they are very special to me, as well as this cool dog breeds book. Um, you know, don't look at these too often, but it's cool to know they're there and they're very cool to me. Here's just a various uh, stack of random books that kind of just fit the color palette in here. Um, the Poisonwood Bible I read this year. Um, I've also read Jurassic Park and Piranesi that are here as well. The other three are somewhere buried in my TBR. I hope to get to them eventually because they're not just for decoration, they're just you know books that I have not gotten to yet. And here are the last books on the shelf. Um, these are a mix of books that I have been gifted or uh, I just haven't had a chance to read yet. Um, the Beer Bucket List is again, just kind of a fun reference book. I haven't really planned to read that. Um, the Glass Castle here on the right is one of my favorite books. Um, it's a memoir of somebody growing up in impoverished parts of the United States. And just a really special, great book overall, highly recommend. And uh, Into the Wild there by John Krakauer, another nonfiction book that I really love. And I love all of, really all of Krakauer's books. He uh, tells nonfiction stories in a way that feel uh, very fiction or story, kind of traditional storytelling. And he, most of his books have to do with outdoors, uh, you know, mountaineering and things like that. So very fascinating stuff. Okay, we are back upstairs at my main bookshelf. Um, before I start showing the books, again, uh, this whole area is kind of a place for all my hobbies to exist, not just books. So I just thought I'd show this Beatles kind of shrine type thing going on, just a Beatles wall. I love the Beatles are one of my favorite bands. And so I got some cool art uh, of the band members' faces, as well as this sound wave art for one of my favorite songs by the Beatles, which is with a little help from my friends. This is a tour poster from Paul McCartney's North American tour last year. I saw him at the baseball stadium in Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, it was kind of like a uh, bucket list thing. You know, he's a member of the Beatles that still plays music and tours to this day and even plays a lot of Beatles songs at his concerts. So I had to splurge and go see him at that concert when he was near where I lived. Um, it was incredible, life-changing experience, and I hope to maybe you see him again one day if he continues to tour. Okay, back to the bookshelf, actually starting to look at some books. Just kidding. Up here, I want to show off my uh, money tree plant that you probably can't see in most videos, but sits above the bookshelf, as well as this really cool uh, horn mug that I got as a gift uh, from my wedding party, from uh, my bachelor party when I got married. It has my last name on it and is super cool. It's called an ale horn, I believe. That's the brand. And uh, my friends know I love fantasy. They know I love Viking stuff. So 
they went in together to get me this super special gift and I love it. Um, it just looks so cool up on the shelf and is a very unique thing. Highly, re highly recommend checking out Alehorn if that looks interesting to you. All right, starting at the top left of my shelf, I have one of these cube shelves called Calyx or Calax from Ikea. They work really well. This is a five by five, which is one of the largest that they sell. Starting here at the top left is of course my small but mighty Stephen King collection. Um, got some books here. Uh, these are all Gerald's Game and these three Dark Tower books are all first editions that I got at my local bookstore. Uh, kind of a fun story. Again, one of the reasons I love used books so much. When I got this Gerald's Game copy, I was really excited because it was a first edition and it looked so brand new, like it had never been read. And what do you know, in the front fold, I found a receipt from like 1993 or 1994. Um, I think that's around when that book came out of somebody who purchased it. And I can only imagine that if that receipt had been sitting in the front of the book for that long, they probably never read it. So that's very cool. This here is a Barnes and Noble uh, special edition of The Stand. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's like a naked paperback with this like gold uh, spray along the page, page edges. Um, I don't, I didn't really read from this much when I did do the stand. I mostly did Kindle and uh, audiobook because this book is massive. And also just being a special edition, I didn't want to mess with it too much. But yeah, I'm still very excited about having that edition. I think it looks pretty cool on the shelf. Coming here, uh, continuing the Stephen King's uh, collection, but also mixing in a couple other horror books. Um, Stephen King wrote a couple books with Peter Straub. I stumbled upon some uh, old edition, hardcover editions of some Peter Straub books that I hope to get to in the future. He kind of exists in a similar place to me as Stephen King, um, not as popular, but they have a relatively similar style from the one book I read by Straub, which is Ghost Story. So I just thought they felt at home here with Stephen King. Um, here is uh, 112263, one of my all time, like top five favorite books of all time. Just fantastic. And so that's uh, pretty much all my Stephen King books. Um, again, you'll probably learn through all this. I'm not a huge collector overall of books, mostly used books, but I am proud of what I have going on here with Stephen King. So without further ado, let's start looking at some fantasy. So here's the first shelf of fantasy. As you can see, it's just a mishmash of random stuff for the most part. Uh, this is a uh, signed copy of The Trouble with Peace, which is one of my favorite books in The First Law. I could not pass up owning a signed copy when I found it at Barnes & Noble's. This is probably my most prized book in my entire collection. It is a first print, first edition of The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. In the hardcover, I've seen that this book can be worth several hundred dollars at this point, given the popularity of the series. I don't think it had a huge first edition run when it first came out back in 2010 or 11. And I found this book at like a random used bookshop by the beach. I, the last place I would have expected to see, you know, a famous fantasy book. Um, it was before I read much Sanderson, but I had heard the hype around the series. And so I had to grab it. I got it for like four bucks. Later found out it was worth quite a bit. And yeah, very proud of it. Sitting on top of it, I have some cool little uh, shard blades from the Stormlight Archive uh, that I have a friend who 3D printed for me. Um, if you can find a friend that 3D prints things, I highly recommend it because you get some pretty cool things. I think this is the Sword Oathbringer, I think. Um, but yeah, these are just such a cool novelty. And so I usually keep them here with my book in the Stormlight Archive. The rest of this shelf is a little bit random other than my Guy Gabriel K collection. Um, I'm planning on reading Sailing to Serantium and Lord of Emperors towards the end of this year. I'm still mad because I bought this one at a used store and then went on um, a used book shop online to find the matching copy for the second part of the series of this duology called Lord of Emperors. In the picture, it showed me the matching copy to this, but what they sent me is clearly not matching. Um, but I was too annoyed to really do anything about it. I just said, whatever, I don't feel like returning it. So I'll have the mismatched copies and that's just how it is. And here is the most aesthetically pleasing shelf in the entire bookshelf. Uh, all these mass market paperbacks are about the same height. Um, the only really big series I have complete here that's not a trilogy is uh, Song of Ice and Fire. I read all these in the mass market paperbacks and uh, I actually enjoyed that quite a bit. Um, it didn't ma matter to me that they were mass market. It worked pretty well especially given how chonky they are. It's a little easier to hold this small book. And then just a couple of random books I saw. I've already read Best Year of Cold by Joe Abercrombie. As again, I'm a big First Law fan. Uh, but when I saw it at a used shop, I just grabbed it because I figured, um, you know, one day maybe I could read it again. And moving on to the next shelf, a just insane assortment of random books that looked okay enough to fit together on a shelf. Um, 
have a couple of Larry McMurtry books, Lonesome Dove and Dead Man's Walk. Uh, found those both used. I had been searching long, a very long time for a Lonesome Dove copy, something about the, the great American novel um, and just like the Western feeling of the book made me think I can't buy it new. I got to find it used somewhere. That's the only way I'll own it. And I finally got lucky. Um, amongst all of those other books, we have some sci-fi, Dune, Pillows of the Earth, which is still one of my favorite books of this year, if not my book of the year for 2023, and uh, House of Leaves, um, which is supposed to be like a really interesting reading experience uh, horror book that I also found randomly used and had to pick up. I don't know when I'm going to read it. Definitely supposed to be an intriguing book from what I've heard, like pages flipped around and puzzles and weirdness um, that is very non-traditional for a normal uh, linear story that you find in most books. And we're on to the next square of the shelf. This one's kind of unfilled so far. Um, I have the Long Price Quartet that I found at a thrift store randomly, probably the most random find I've ever found, just at the local Goodwill. Um, and a couple books that I just recently bought at the Hodges Finish store, a bookstore in Dublin, Ireland. And uh, that is one of the finest bookstores I've ever been to in my entire life. And it was hard to walk away with just two books, but those are the two I chose. Um, here's, I think, one of the last plants I'll be showing you today, which is a baby rubber tree. And I just love the way it looks on the shelf alongside the books. Continuing here, again, a very strange random assortment of books. Um, this is The Lincoln Highway by Amor Tolls, a book that's been sitting on my TBR for far too long. Amor Tolls wrote one of my all-time favorite books, The Gentleman, I'm sorry, A Gentleman in Moscow. And uh, I've been looking forward to reading that for quite a while now. Uh, Uzumaki is the first manga I ever read. It's on, also the only manga on the shelf. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that one. It was a great intro into manga. Over here has some uh, Cormac McCarthy, um, Octavia Butler, Parable of the Sower. I'd love to check that out eventually. Again, just a wide assortment. Every book you see here, I technically have plans to read. Uh, it's just a matter of when I will. I do not know, uh, but they all exist somewhere on my TBR. And we continue on through here, another very random assortment. Um, we have Oh, The Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. I was given that as a graduation gift when I graduated college. And so I felt like it deserved to be here um, alongside my books because it's special to me. And uh, The Watchmen, Watchmen, not The Watchmen, I suppose, a uh, graphic novel that uh, absolutely blew me away. Highly recommend. It's not just traditional um, superhero comics. It is philosophical and deep and truly fascinating. Definitely recommend giving that a try if you're at all into, uh, you know, that type of story, more philosophical and theme based than, you know, your normal uh, action, whatever that you find for superheroes. It was a great experience reading that. And the rest of what I got here is just random stuff. Uh, found one book in the Fits and the Fool trilogy at the thrift store. So I got it. Uh, we have one of those, there's these things here in the States called free little libraries, which are just basically these like book bins that you can leave books in or take out of in various neighborhoods around where I live. And I randomly found The Bear and the Nightingale, which is the first book in Winter Night in one of those, probably like the only fantasy book I've ever found in one of those bins, but uh, I was glad to take it home with me. And one of my favorite shelves here on the entire bookshelf is my Tolkien dedicated shelf. Um, Tolkien was kind of the start of this whole hobby that you see here when I randomly decided to pick up this strange movie adapted copy of the Lord of the Rings uh, book at a local used store. I was like, ah, never watched the movie. Maybe kind of fun to try it. I had read The Hobbit and liked it. So I thought that Lord of the Rings would be worth a shot. And little did I know it would completely change my life. And uh, still have the Silmarillion and the Children of Hurin here in paperback. I have not read those. I hope to one day really dig back into Tolkien and try to read almost everything he's put out. Obviously, that's not always an easy task, but uh, at some point, I definitely want to read The Silmarillion, maybe in the next year or so. Here's a couple collectible Funko Pops of uh, Gandalf the Grey and Saruman. Yes, these hats are canon. Um, they wear these in the movies. So you just probably don't look at the deleted scenes. They wear both of these hats. They're actually very crucial to their character, uh, so don't say anything else about them. My friend did uh, 3D print these for me. It was supposed to be for like plants, like you can put a hat on like a cactus and make it wear a hat, but I uh, thought they looked better on these two characters from the movie. Uh, again, they do wear these hats in all three of the Lord of the Rings movie trilogy. Here is a cool bookmark that I got um, that 
it's kind of delicate, so I don't actually use it for reading too much, but it's very cool. It is um, obviously Lord of the Rings themed, and I thought that as a sword, it kind of looked cool here with the characters from the movie. And so, yeah, don't use it too much as a bookmark, um, and I'll show you my bookmark collection here a little later. But uh, yeah, it's just too cool to not have out on display. And here is like the one shelf in this entire bookshelf that is somewhat organized by series that kind of makes sense. Um, the first two books in the Bloodsworn Saga, two of the three books in the Warlord Chronicles. I'm reading The Winter King right now. It would normally be right there. And he, right here is a box set of the three-body problem that I found at a used shop. Uh, it was one of those series that I probably would never have read based on what I've how I've heard it described, but uh, couldn't pass up getting a good deal on the box set. So now at some point, I'll probably try to read it. And this is the last shelf of books within the bookshelf. Um, a very, very random assortment of books. I mean, we have uh, a keto diet book from when I briefly was on a diet <laughs> several years ago. Um, this is a couple of teacher books because my wife is a teacher and she had those for different reasons. Um, this is a tabletop RPG book, a system called Fate. Um, it's not very similar to D&D that a lot of people play. It's a uh, more kind of dumbed down basic version of tabletop role playing that me and my friends did a campaign of a few years ago and had an incredible blast doing it. So I keep that reference book handy in case we ever decide to play again. All right. And the rest of the shelf is just kind of like random amusements and hobby related things that I've gathered over the years. Uh, so feel free to stick around if you want to learn about those, but that's actually it for the books that I just showed you. So this is a Lego koi fish that I got. Uh, I went through like a Kickstarter phase before I was even really into books. Um, I've never even kickstarted a fantasy book or anything, but this really slick and cool Lego koi fish is like the only Lego set I've ever built, um, and it moves too. So let me just cut away real quick and show you how it moves. So yeah, that is super cool to have on my shelf. I think it looks awesome. This is just a globe because I love maps as well as a wax melter. Uh, the scent you see in here is actually called Old Books that I got off Etsy. And I would say it's pretty accurate to how old books smell, which is really cool and I love it. This is this, <laughs> this random uh, like ball, uh, like I don't even know what you call it, but basically, all these wooden parts come together um, and you make this cool set where you can crank it and the balls will go on this course. And it's very satisfying. I did this right around when COVID started and we all needed things to do. I ended up getting it and spent like a week building it. It was very delicate and difficult to do. So I'm very proud of how it turned out. And real quick, I will cut away to show you how this works as well. The last plant of the day here is a spider plant, very normal, regular plant you probably see around, um, and I just like the way it looks on the shelf. All right, now I'm sitting on the floor just to kind of all at once show you my board game collection. Uh, I went through a very major board game hobbyist phase where I was just buying them and playing them all the time. And unfortunately, I just don't have that much passion for board games as I used to. I still love them, but I don't pull these off the shelf all that often to play. However, I keep them in case it ever comes back around again. Um, yeah, if uh, anyone is ever interested in board games, I could probably talk to you about them too, just like I could books. Uh, it's just not my main hobby anymore. But yes, I do love board games, and maybe you recognize a few of the ones you see here on the shelf, as well as a couple extras over here. So here's a shelf of just some random assorted things. Um, some fidget toys, because I always have to be busy doing something when I'm like working here. Uh, by the bookshelf is also my office, so I usually keep those hand, you know, keep those handy to have my hands be busy when I'm working or thinking on some things. Uh, randomly 3D printed octopus toy that is just like, I don't know, kind of cool, kind of just like a novelty. Um, a Beatles music box, and one of my favorite things that I own is this thing called a Mesmo Globe. Uh, this was a Kickstarter that I backed back a few years ago when I got that same uh, koi fish Lego set. Uh, yeah, I just like to look at this and spin it. It's fun. It's really it. And here's a stack of bookmarks, as well as a book light for when I'm not reading on my Kindle, but want to be able to read in the dark. Uh, here's a cross-stitched 
bookmark of uh, Gandalf that I made once when I was bored. Thought it was pretty cool. Here is a, uh, a bookmark from, this is from the Book of Kells in Ireland. Uh, this is probably my favorite bookmark I own. It's like glimmery and shimmery and shiny and uh, based off a very ancient like gospel book that was written um, and kept in Ireland and is now on display. So when we went and visited that in Dublin, I had to pick up this beautiful bookmark. This is a bookmark um, that is just like a like Antarctica thing. I don't know. I just saw this at a used shop and it looked cool. And the rest of those are just various pieces of paper that have served as bookmarks for me over time. Lastly, random stuff, you know, pens, scissors, a couple of novelties. This is like a game where there's like a ball that you have to like get it through the path. And it's like very difficult. I've never beaten it, but occasionally I'll pick it up and just decide I'm going to do it this time. And I never succeed, but it's still very fun. And last but not least, if you grew up in America, mid 90s, like early 2000s kid, you might have seen one of these before. I don't even know what it's called. It's just like a toy. Found it at a thrift store and I kept it and it lives on my shelf. And that's pretty much it. And that's pretty much everything I have today for the bookshelf tour. I really hope that you all enjoyed getting to see all my books and some of the random hobby stuff that I've got laid out on my bookshelf, learn a little bit more about me and who I am outside of reading. Um, and I really enjoyed making this video. Again, I made this as a celebration for 100 subscribers. I really do appreciate everybody who has subscribed, liked, commented, anything. You're taking the time to interact with me here. I really appreciate it. That's pretty much all I have for today, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.